Prior to the Australian Grand Prix, I had the opportunity to speak exclusively with Australian Grand Prix Corporation CEO Andrew Westacott about a number of things. I'm your host, Dylan Shelley, and first up on Formula World, Australian Grand Prix Corporation CEO speaks candidly about Australian Grand Prix and promoting Australian drivers. Esports has seen a boom in recent years, with even racing drivers taking an active part in it these days. Westacott started off by speaking about whether they have any plans of implementing esports into the wider event of the Australian Grand Prix. Look, we've always got an open mind on those. We've, um, we've done some uh, great simulator work on circuit, which brings a lot of people uh, excitement and joy to, to race against their family and friends on circuit. Um, we want to develop it and we want to develop involvement and uh, interest in the sport of Formula One. And if that includes esports, well, then it's probably part of the landscape in the future. But there's no definitive plans right now. Over the years, many drivers from Australia, such as Jack Brabham, Alan Jones, Mark Webber and Daniel Ricciardo, have left a mark on F1. Westacott addressed how the Australian Grand Prix Corporation plans to promote the current crop of Australian drivers, starting with Oscar Piastri. Look, um, the heart and soul of Formula One racing and the breeding ground of uh, Formula One drivers across the world is go-karting. We've got a strong association with Karting Australia, we have a strong association with Motorsport Australia, and every one of the young drivers from an Aussie point of view has cut their teeth racing karting. The young boys and girls who are out there in clubs around the country every weekend and in at the Australian Karting Championships and then going off with a lot of support from their families, friends and benefactors to go overseas and race. It's what it's all about. It's a tough road to Formula One, but the fact that we've got a Formula One driver, Jack Doohan in Formula Two and three Aussies in Formula Three shows that those pathways are worth following. We just want to make sure everyone gets behind it. Get down to your local karting club. There's going to be displays on circuit from a karting point of view and a Motorsport Australia point of view. So we couldn't be more happy with the pathways. We just want to see young boys and girls making it onto the grid here at Albert Park, given the contract is here until 2037. The Australian Grand Prix has a long and storied history, but the challenge is finding the perfect balance between modernisation and honouring the heritage associated with the event. Andrew addressed their approach towards achieving this. Well, I'll tell you what, it's interesting. We're sitting here on the, the side of Albert Park Lake and probably about 200 metres away is where the start of the 1953 uh, Grand Prix of Australia was. Um, that was the first time Grand Prix racing was held here at Albert Park. It's 70 years ago this year and they raced in the opposite race direction. Um, they didn't have all the barriers. They had hay bales and there was lots of people standing on the side of exposed trees around Albert Park Lake. Now, safety and the developments of the circuit have come a long, long way. And one of the big developments we've done was when we invested $20 million to upgrade the surface, resurface it, make it faster, make it safer, evolve it so it aligns with the new cars, the 2022 spec cars. And the racing in 2022 saw the fastest Formula One race here in history. We expect 23 to see faster speeds, faster qualifying, We'd expect the uh, pole position lap time of 1 minute 17 from 2022 to be bettered. I expect the fastest lap in the race to be bettered. And uh, time will tell whether someone like Charles Leclerc gets fastest lap, pole position, leading every race and a race win, or leading every lap and a race win. Not done terribly often, but Charles did it uh, in 22. Let's hope it's Oscar Piastri in 2023. The pandemic obviously forced many into complicated and precarious situations. It was no different for Formula One and the Australian Grand Prix. Westacott delved into how they navigated the tricky times brought on by COVID. Look, the navigation across a, a three-year period from March 2020 to, to now March, April 2023 is all about the not only just the resilience, but also the relentless pursuit of, uh, of delivering the event by everyone at the Grand Prix Corporation. I mean, they were tough times. We had cancellation after cancellation of Formula One and also MotoGP down at Phillip Island and even a new event called the, the Bass Coast Festival of Motorsport. But the fact that now every one of our staff member has been able to deliver an event in um, 2022, a MotoGP event in October 22, and now be here with record crowds um, anticipated for the event, um, we've got a great event coming ahead of us. And the key things we want to do is make sure that every fan experience is a great one. And so there's been a lot of work put into the event fundamentals. General admission viewing hubs, food and beverage, 
amenities, safety, cleanliness and public transport. And that's what people want and expect when they come to uh, um, the event. Minister Demopoulos said, um, we expect incredible as sports fans and the team at the Grand Prix Corporation delivers incredible. Westacott signed off by responding to whether there's anything else he'd like to add about the upcoming Australian Grand Prix. No, it's going to be an absolute cracker. It is going to be the biggest Formula One Australian Grand Prix in history. And let's hope that it really, really does set Oscar Piastri's career off on the right path.